Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. The show is a proud media partner for the 11th Annual Media Excellence Awards, which are produced by Access Entertainment in Los Angeles, California. The Media Excellence Awards are recognized as the most influential awards show, honoring innovation and leadership in all things mobile entertainment, lifestyle, and technology. For more information on how to submit to these awards, please visit MediaXAwards.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Amanda Watson. She's the founder at StyleForIt.com. Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I, I think what you're doing is is really innovative and cool, but maybe before we get into that stuff, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. I grew up in Sacramento, California. Okay, very cool. So you, you went to um, fashion school. What did you take and, and what was, was there kind of like a defining moment in your childhood that made you kind of passionate about fashion? Uh, I would say that the defining moment would probably be uh, my, uh, watching MTV. <laughs> Interesting. Sure. It, it was all about it. <laughs> do, you, do you remember, like, just watching, like, like fashion in kind of the, the music videos? Or, or, like, what about MTV? Yeah, I mean, MTV was, you know, I, I, at my age. <laughs> it, was, it was the 80s, and so it was sure. Madonna. It was all these really, really cool chicks. And, I mean, things were, like, as anything goes in the 80s, so it was really fun to play with. And lots of color and, and lots of just... You know, fun to feather in your hair and, you know, different color, you know, colors to the way teal was in. And it was just a fun time, you know, to be a kid and, and playing with fashion. So Sure. So what made you go to you? Because you went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, correct? Yes, I did in San Francisco. What made you pick um, that school? Well, one, number one, mostly because it's close to home, sure. so I wouldn't be too far away from my family in Sacramento. Right. Uh, growing up, going to San Francisco, I have fa- I had family there at the time, so uh, I still do actually. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a great program. I thought it was, you know, it was, it was a two-year program, which was easier in my mind to sort of wrap my head around right. than a four-year program, so I could get right to work. <laughs> sure. So you graduate. Walk me through kind of your career up until kind of what you're doing right now. Uh, I started, I was fortunate enough to get a corporate position with Macy's West uh, nice. at the time and worked uh, in three different positions there. One was a bridal registry coordinator position, which may not sound as glamorous and not very fashiony, but it, it was the first step into becoming an assistant buyer Sure. Um, in women's sportswear. And then from there, I worked in the fashion office for two years. Okay. Yes. And then I left Macy's West for Donna Karen and manage their men's program on the West Coast. Okay, interesting. How, that was probably a yeah. di- way different experience. Yeah, yes, it was, it was a lot of travel, and I, I liked that idea at the time. So it, I wanted to get out of the office because I felt like I was too young to be stuck in an office. And actually going back, I probably would never have left, but that's another story. So. <laughs> sure, sure, interesting. <laughs> but I wanted to be traveling up and down the coast and going to New York, and, and that's what that, that job provided me. So um, they had the DKNY men's launch. It became a much bigger brand than it was initially. So they needed someone to manage the businesses um, up and down the West Coast, and that's what I did. Interesting, because like – that brand was huge, right? Like that brand just kind of blew up. So you probably got to see it kind of from an, its infancy into being this kind of huge brand. Well, it was just men's, right? So men's, well, women's was already super oh, duper was established okay. at this point because this is like 2001. Oh, okay. And okay. Um, so women's was very, very established in the fabric of the community. Right. Um, and of course, now it's pretty much gone, sadly. But, um, yeah, which is interesting, but men, right? they thought, like, let's, let's, you know, yeah, they, they tried to, you know, ride the coattails of women's and, and create the men's line. And the men's line did do well. And that was back basically, you know, with Kenneth Cole was the big deal for men at the time. That was uh-huh. the brand to wear for men. But uh, yeah, so Deacon White was trying to, trying to ride all of ride that wave. And, and so I was just with men. So actually, uh, one of my best friends, and still one of my best friends, was doing the DKY women's business and doing the same job. So that's how I got the job. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Very yeah. cool. So walk me through how you decided to kind of 
come up for, with uh, style for it, and what exactly is it? Okay, so it's twofold. One of it's part of it um, came the idea came from my professional career, and the other part of it came personally. Um, I've always grown up being a girl over a size, size twelve and up. Okay. And I've always been a girl that um, would wear things once or twice and then decide I don't like it anymore because I'm finicky. Um, and so it's like, well, where do I sell this to? Because growing up with Crossroads, um, trading company being a big thing here in Northern California, you could sell if you're under a size 12. You could sell all your clothes. But if okay. anything above that, you're kind of stuck with it and no one's really doing anything about it. So I would just keep things or I would donate them. Or, and then at some point, I was just keep, keep, you know, holding on to things. And then it professionally, uh, four years ago, I started with a company called Gigi, and it's a big deal in, in the plus size community. Um, it's a dress uh, company, and they make beautiful dresses, wedding, um, casual dresses at a higher price point. And I was seeing a lot of leftover stock just sitting around. Okay. And I thought, what a waste. And, and that there's got to, I'm not the only girl out there with this problem. There's not the only company out there with this problem. Where do we go with this? So I, about two years ago, I... I went to a developer down in Los Angeles and had him, he had a completely custom site because I couldn't just use a square space or, or anything like that just to just sure. build this site. So I had him develop this, this, this site and I decided this year in January to quit my other job and do this full time. Wow. And develop this, this website. So, yeah. so <laughs> kind of before we dive a little bit deeper into kind of what you guys do, I, I'm a little bit curious. So you worked full time while you were building this uh, style for it, correct? Yes, I, okay. I was doing a couple of different things with brands, um, like managing um, a small lingerie brand with the, the using the Nordstrom account. So. Okay, okay, and then yeah. you self-funded style for it? Or did you raise some money? Oh yeah, my own money. Okay, no, it, it's <laughs> now it's my husband's money. <laughs> got you, got you. I, no, but it's cool. It's interesting because. So many people say like, oh, you should quit your full-time job to, to do this. And like, I, I think like sometimes you need to, but sometimes you don't need to. It's like, it really, really depends on what you're trying to do and kind of your situation. Um, right. And it sounds it like you, uh, you obviously built something while you were still working, which I, I think is interesting. So I know you briefly kind of covered it, but let's dive a little bit deeper into exactly what style for it does. So um, do you want to maybe cover that a little bit? Yes, I would. So we are um, we are really trying to get uh, the word out with, with the community of, of girls over a size 12 is, is up to a size 32 even. Because okay. um, I saw a miss in that marketplace too when I was with the Gigi um, with the, the 4Xs and above. Um, so what, what we're trying to work on is getting people, and I have a ton of products that's on there now. I'm adding more products in the photo shoot tomorrow. Uh, I'm trying to get people to either, a gal can post anywhere in the United States to post her own dress on the site, okay. I approve the, the, the cost price point, and um, and then it, then it goes live, and then I take a twenty percent commission out of that, gotcha. and then I will provide a label and all of the payment arrangements, so everybody's happy. So the person who orders it, once they get the dress and they're happy with the product, I will pay out the seller at that point. Gotcha. Or if you're too busy of a, of a girl, you can pack everything up into your own box or request a bag or box from me, and I will mail that to you. And you can go ahead and fill it on up with the approved brands that are on the list in the site. Okay. And I will go ahead and use it in my next photo shoot and put it on the site for you and take a 30% commission. Interesting. And again, handling all of the payment and the labels and everything. Okay, very cool. So I, yeah. this maybe sounds like a stupid question. You were kind of the first to market in this space. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is fair to say, and in, in, in a nationwide um, capacity, there's a couple other gals out there doing it. The Plus Bus is a big deal in Los Angeles, and they literally have a bus of clothes if they go around town. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and wow. I think that's fantastic. No, uh, but I really want to make this this sort of virtual for everybody and make it a lot easier to sell. Well, sure. I, I think you're filling like a need, right? And which is which is great. So, how does it kind of work? Like, if I'm so you you quickly covered kind of. Um, people that are looking to sell kind of their, their, their stuff they have. But if I'm uh, somebody that's looking for something, I just go to the website as well and I can shop and browse all these different kind of um, brands and, and clothing? Yes, yes, you can. And um, we're also a kind of component um, of the developer where, and, and for now I'm going to have people eat, I can have people email me. I want to get like a wish list going for people. Like if someone's looking for a specific bridal dress, I have like two or three dresses left in bridal. If they're looking for a bridal dress, 
say for next March, and if I have 26, I can keep an eye out for that person. And then when, when something hits, then we can let them know, like, here's this dress, here's a photograph of it and the condition it's in. Um, and if it's been altered, and then perhaps they'd be interested in purchasing it. So Okay, so you kind of broker a, a bit sometimes. People. Yeah, I would be, yeah, I, I'd like to get into that because I think that that's, that's you know, that's sort of the wave uh, of where things are going. I mean, a lot of people may not want to get rid of something, but if they got the right price, they, they could. But I'd like to get people interested in the site. And I'd like to get people interested in reselling their, their garments because I think there's a lot of waste in the business overall. So well, sure, it'd be I nice to move things along to other people. Sure. Well, I think everybody's kind of guilty of there's probably stuff in everybody's closet that they haven't worn Absolutely. in years or decades, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, okay. That That's interesting. So walk me through a little bit of kind of your journey, because you said you've been doing this a couple of years now. How did you kind of, what did you kind of initially launch with? And then how has it kind of evolved over the last couple of years? Um, it, it actually, it, it, it was built out. Um, and the technical issues were, were great, were vast, because I had a developer that, I, I, I know nothing of technology, to be honest with you. I know how to use the internet. <laughs> but, Got you, sure. Um, so I was coming from a place of, this is what I want, go. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so a lot of the technical, um, the technical aspects were, were a bit of a miss uh, from me in the beginning because I, I honestly did not know what I'm doing, but I couldn't afford to hire anybody to help me to do that because like, I had just enough to build the site. And so he helped me with that. But then uh, apparently this is a thing in, in, uh, in startup. The developer went by the wayside and I didn't hear from him and he, didn't, he did a bunch of things wrong. So there was that fun part of this. And then so I had to hire another developer and then he made a lot of mistakes. And, and I actually had a friend pop in uh, on, a, on, a, on a freebie basis who knew enough to be dangerous about technical writing and what okay. he did. And she actually went back after him. So it was sort of interesting. But now I've got a great developer. Interesting. <laughs> so that's why it's been such a slow startup because I think I literally was like, I have a job. I am too frustrated to deal with this right now. And I would stop doing it. Interesting. If that makes any sense. No, I, I, so I, I 100%. Like 30 pieces. Yeah. Interesting. So, how did you kind of push through that, though, and keep this thing going? Um, because I really, and I, I, would, I would read things. I would, I, I, you know, first I would read things in the trades or, you know, see what's going on out there. And I'm like, okay, I've got I've got to focus again, get back into it. And, you know, and, and, you know, this is something and it's going to be something. And then it's like, I don't really want to work for anybody else anymore. And I, I, I had my own showroom at one point when I was in my early, thir early to mid thirties. And okay. it's like, I can do this again. I can build another, another business, but I want it just to be big, you know? Sure. I'd like to be able to be bought out at some point. <laughs> no fair. Yeah. I think <laughs> and, that's and, every and entrepreneur's dream, right? Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's great. That's great. So <laughs> I'm for sale. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I guess, and like, I don't know how to like, I don't know how to phrase this, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, why didn't somebody do this before you? I don't know. Right? <laughs> and like, like, that's funny that you say that. Yeah. Because it, it's, I thought of it too. I'm like, why isn't Lane Bryant thinking of this? Why isn't someone working for them? Why isn't someone working for Torres thinking of this or Eloquy or all these, these, big, these big plus size names, Winnie D? Why is no one else? I, I don't know. I think that they're so busy running a successful business that, that they don't, you know, they don't need to worry about this and they probably job out all of their items. I would like to work with someone like a, a smaller, big one, like an eloquy and say, Hey, I'd like, I'd like to have enough finance to say, I will take your overruns. Got you. You know, I will buy your overruns for pennies on the dollar, which has been in, you know, the part of the part of the fashion business for, for decades. So that's not a new, that's not a new vision. So um, I'd like to, I'd like to go into that space and, you know, add this to the site and really make it a, a big thing. So this is really a resource for a lot of people, you know, so they can buy off price, but I don't know why no one's doing it. I don't know. And I'm really excited because I, I feel like there's a lot of traction on social media for the site. And a lot of the girls that would be the, the customers are really excited. And that's really fulfilling to hear because whether or not it's making money is not the point in the beginning. The point is, is like, do people like it? Is sure. it something that people are going to want to shop and well, use as a resource? Well, and like anything, they tell their friends, right? Like they're like, look, I got this thing. Because I, I think part of the thing that I think a lot of people struggle with is even if you need like a nice dress or suit or anything, like you only wear it, what, once anyway? So even just being able to get rid of it or pass it along, 
is actually like huge, right? Because there's so many things that you just buy and you wear once and you're like, I will never wear that again. Right, right, yes. I, I actually was organizing my photo shoot tomorrow and found dresses that literally still had tags on it that were probably from 10 years ago. Interesting. <laughs> no, that's cool. So, so how, again, like, I don't know the t- proper terminology for this, but like, how is the, the fashion industry kind of changed over the years um, in, in these kind of sizes? Um, well, there once upon a time, it was, I mean, just, I, I once upon a time, it was only 15 to 20 years ago, actually. Sure. You, your resource was, was Lane Bryant, was Macy Woman, was the small Encore department at Nordstrom. And you either went from like, you know, really, I mean, of course, there's other retailers that has had a plus, you know, that, that service the plus community. But that, I mean, but it was like a, a dark corner in, in the third floor of the store. So okay. unless you go to Macy's Union Square, where it was actually always part of the business in that particular door. Okay. Um, but if you went to any of their other doors, like downtown Sacramento, it was in the third floor behind house squares and children, literally behind it. It was kind of sad. Um, and you had some good vendors making some, some good, decent products, but, you, but the price points were incredibly high. I mean, okay. and I still had some of those clothes because they were so darn expensive because I had that, that lifestyle. However, you either had the high end um, Alan Tracy, Dana Buckman, Jones, New York for the world, where you're averaging, you know, two to five hundred dollars for a suit, which is it's, it's high end for a lot of people. And or you've got Lane Bryant at the time, which was kind of boxy, if it's in the you know man made fabric. Um, you know, they were averaging nineteen to twenty nine dollars a piece, and kind of looked like it at the time. Granted, I'll tell, tell you right now, they're doing a really good job. I think they looks a lot better than they used to in the past. So nothing was really focus on that 20 something girl, 30 something girl who wanted to look modern, but was a size 24, I see. you know, okay. it was either for my mother or someone like lower end, unfortunately. I see. So, yeah. 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 You don't want to dress yeah. like your grandmother, right? Especially like your corporate yeah, job. Exactly. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so now I see it evolving and, and really focus on girls like, you know, and their, their teens, you know, it, it's probably up to maybe, maybe mid fifties. I, I, I mean, unfortunately anything older than that is, and at least nowadays, that that's serviced by something different. It's it's, it's not it's not your bread and butter anymore. So oh, you've got you. like a thirty year, um, you know, thirty years of a woman that that you know they're, that's being serviced now by different price points and different fabrications and different silhouettes. And I think that's really great. There's a lot of different things being made for girls over a size fourteen and size twelve. Interesting. And they're also offering bigger sizes. They're not stopping at 22s and 24s anymore. They're offering things to people that are up to a size 32 because there's that customer too that needs, that needs something nice and look, to look great and look modern in. So. Sure. I got you. So you said something interesting to me before we were kind of recording um, kind of about seeing actually actual plus size models at New York Fashion Week. Do you want to kind of talk a bit more about that and um, why that's like such a huge deal? It's a big deal because it's now becoming the norm. Sure. Because they did a they did a Kirby Con. Um, there's a gal that throws Kirby Con twice a year. I'm actually hoping to participate in the Los Angeles one in 2019. Um, but she and it's during Fashion Week, so uh, she's got that going on in New York. But I was just noticing a picture, and it was of Rihanna. And I want to say the gal was Chrissy Metz because she had a, but she had a blonde wig on, and they were like modeling together with um, the Hadid girls. Okay. The, um, I can't think of their names. I can picture their faces, but um, they're like major models, actually. You know, sure. Oh, um, Bella Hadid and her sister, um, and the Ren Rihanna. You know, the big girl on her own. Um, and they're all sort of standing together, like like doing doing a little, a little photo shoot. And I'm like, that's great. Like, no one's like, oh, geez, here's the fat girl. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's like they're like all looking cute, and everybody's dressed up and looks great, and it's not weird. It's not some girl in a moo moo. It's a, it's, a, it's a plus size girl standing next to who run is now sort of a normal size girl because she's getting a little weight and these two skinny models. But everybody looks like they're having a great time. It doesn't look weird anymore. I, I don't know how to, how to say that. Um, sure. Because in the past, it's always just like, like the token like chubby girl was there. <laughs> well, but now it looks like everybody's, you know, and, and like it's inclusion. I think that's really important. Yeah, I, I think it's it's also good for, for young people kind of growing up to see people that look like them at all kind of sizes, right? And see everybody just kind of hanging out with each other, right? Like, especially with right. now that we're such a global kind of economy, I think it it's interesting just like you will meet people that are different than you in your lifetime. Whatever that is, it doesn't even really matter, but just kind of being 
able to accept each other for who you are, I think is kind of seems to be a lot more people are actually caring more about it. Companies are caring more about it. People are trying to um, level the playing field a little bit. Do you kind of find that or is it I, I, we, we still have a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. But like at least from kind of a outside white male perspective, it seems to be at we start we're starting to get better and caring more about yes. this. Is it fair to say? I, I think that we're starting to, um, you know, let people of a certain age or young enough to be impressionable say you don't have to be six feet tall and blonde. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. <skinny. laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is what I grew up with. Sure. <laughs> the only thing I got out of that whole thing is I am almost six feet tall. <laughs> but that, that is, everything else is different. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but, um, but you know, I mean, I, I was having a conversation with someone this morning about that, about being tan. It's like, you're the same age. It's like, if you weren't tan and blonde in California, you were ridiculous. But these, they were saying how nice it is these days that everybody can celebrate what they, what they were given. You know, sure. because life is hard enough. We're having to worry about all of the physical physical attributes that you cannot necessarily always control, no matter what it looks like. So sure. you can't control some, some some things. I mean, some of us are going to be a certain size because that's our gene pool. So yeah. you know, you can do the best you can and take care of yourself, and that's what I try to do. Um, I still try to live a really healthy lifestyle, and but it's still going to be a certain thing for me. Sure. So you can't control everything. So it's nice to see other people looking different and different. Um, you know, shapes, sizes, colors, everything. It's really fun to see everybody just be normal and be themselves. <laughs> sure. I, I think the other thing, too, that, that people forget sometimes, like, sometimes it's like a medical, like, thyroid condition, right? That, like, some people, like, can't actually, um, like, they just are the size they are. Yeah. And, like, they can't, like, they will never be, like, it's just, like, there. there's some sort of thyroid issue or something, Right, that they just, I, I knew a girl like that, right? And she just kind of had to accept that. And, you know, watching her go through that was quite, quite fascinating, right? Just, you, you didn't, it's, it's, you don't really think about some of this stuff until you know somebody that's kind of gone through something, right? Right, because you just judge immediately. Yeah, you know, and we all kind of judge for better or worse. And be like, right? oh, well, if you don't do that, then you wouldn't have this problem. It's like, well, you don't know that. Yeah. What do we know? <laughs> exactly. No, it's, it's quite fascinating. So, how, like, I, I guess you kind of mentioned like earlier too when we were talking um, about kind of like a big turn in, in society and it's kind of along the lines of what we're talking about. Like why do you think it's finally kind of being kind of accepted and starting to be kind of this normal thing that people are open to talk about where it was kind of taboo not even that long ago? This is just my personal perspective on it. Um, when I was growing up, I, I feel like – I feel like people have just physically changed in the past 20 years. I just okay. think that when I was up, you didn't see a lot of heavier people. I mean, there was even, even at the time though, I know in the, in the, in the fashion business itself, they actually talked about, you know, women, you know, 60% of women are over size 14. I don't know how accurate that is then and now, but that's still like, I think that still rings true. So it seems like there should be, some, there's some inaccuracy there, but I didn't, you don't see, you didn't, now granted maybe you didn't see it because I didn't see it on TV, but I mean, out in the, in the, the real world, I didn't see it as much, you know, but okay. I feel like people are generally are just getting bigger. I just, that's what I think. I just think that, I mean, everybody's changed. I think what we eat may, has made the world different. I think that, you know, we're, we're, the, the philosophies have changed. And so people just look different. I think sadly, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not judging, you know, the kids these days, but I don't sure. think that everybody goes out and, and like hangs out. Like when I was a kid, you had to go to the creek and have fun and go to the park. You know, we had a party, but it was like, it was not as fun as it, everything is now. So we weren't quite so, I mean, and I'm not trying to say he's lazy, but just a different lifestyle. It's just, I think people are a little more glued to television and playing, you know, indoors than they are outside being, being physical. And there's something wrong with that. That's your life. Enjoy it. Um, but I'm, I, I think that I think people have changed. So I think people are starting to catch on. I think for my at my business, and I think probably for the entertainment world, people are starting to say, "Hey, we've done the same thing. Let's shake it up." And then now they're like, "Wait a minute, maybe there's this category we can work with." You know? So I think that you're starting to see. And, and I mean, I say in Hollywood, that's that's for every category. They're just looking at like let's diversify. Let's let's, let's stop doing the same boring stuff all over. All, you know? And I think in the fashion business especially the women's side of the business, they're saying, you know, we're missing out on this huge, um, for lack of a <laughs> huge, I use ironically, but, oh, yeah. um, uh, this huge portion of, of women that we're actually missing on. I mean, like, that's the only place you can really grow in my business. Uh, that's, that I don't see, I mean, everything else is so saturated. 
um, even the petite business is quite saturated. So okay. I think that the plus business is where you can find it entering. That, that's, you know, it's, that, that's where I think that we can, we can grow. So. Sure. So where do you kind of see this going? Because you mentioned something earlier to me about kind of recycling. What, what does that kind of mean? And where do you kind of see all this stuff kind of going? Well, I, like I said, I'd like to see um, buying overruns from, from smaller companies sure. to start and see, see what that looks like and see if that's a success. And I'd like to make sure that, you know, we're not continually buying and, and, and hoarding things. I'd like to, you know, and, and in some cases, some girls may be out there like, like, like I was, uh, where they're like holding on to things, thinking, "Well, I only wore it once. It's still great. It's my supporters, you know. Maybe I can get rid of it somewhere or give it to someone else, sure. and maybe just move that along." And then, what if one, maybe one or two less things are? I mean, they'll still be manufactured clothes, so I'm not going to say they're not going to they're going to stop that. But that's one less thing that you know you have to go out and buy at a store. You can order it online. I mean, I just feel like if we can sort of adjust our, our our mindset, which I think that slowly we are in a lot of different things and the sharing economy. Um, yeah. is, you know, so less is more these days. So yes, that's a great piece. I can save a bunch of money, but then this gal only wore it once. So yeah. I think it's a great thing. So I don't have to go out and maybe less things will be made because we all know that's the whole thing, you know, um, but, you know, in the world, there's, there's too much. There's a gluttony of, of manufacturing in a lot of different products. So I'd like to see that if we all keep sharing and even in the designer world, the real, real.com is doing really well with, um, you know, Sherry, you know, moving along designer and, you know, luxury pieces. So it would be nice to see things, you know, repurposed for people. Sure. Thanks for listening to Building the Future. This show is heard by more than a million people monthly in over 15 markets worldwide, including Silicon Valley. Kevin Horick's guests are leading business owners, successful entrepreneurs, and merchandisers worldwide. Now, your brand has an opportunity to tap into this dedicated and active group of business people who are looking for places to invest and the right opportunities to support. Find out how you can get involved at buildingthefutureshow.com. For people that are looking to maybe become a seller, how do they actually go about doing that with you? You covered it kind of quickly, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Okay, so if you go on the site and you want to, and you hit the become a seller, okay. you uh, you log in and create a login profile, okay. and then you can start uploading photographs and descriptions. Um, I'll, I'll use a, I'll use Michael Kors again. I, I just sold a, a, a sparkle top this morning that I shipped out for for a gal. Okay, and you take a picture of it. I prefer people to take a picture of it neck down on themselves with like a selfie. Okay, because I you can actually see how the things drape. Sure, and you sure. put the size just with their decide, phone, right? You know, Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm actually trying to develop an app. But that's a whole other thing. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> but, sure. Right. Um, um, but uh, so and then you would upload the photograph and then a description of the product and you can take a guess at what price you'd like to see it sold at. Okay. Um, and I'm going to review in the beginning right now. I'm actually personally reviewing all of those things because some people are great and they put really cute things up and I'm like you're not charging enough. So I was you know I add a little gotcha. bit more to it. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and sure. Then some why not? People, I'm like, a little too high and I'll adjust the price and let them know. And if they're like, Oh, I'd like more, you know, then I'll try it at their price and see how it goes. So because it right now it is all on consignment basis. So, right, okay. you know, what it sells for, it sells for. So how um, long do you keep something or, or if just... they, it's still posted and, until it sells. So okay. until okay. it sells or they tell me they've gotten rid of it. <laughs> I see. Okay. No, that's fair. And yeah. then, um, you mentioned earlier, if I have a bunch of stuff that I just don't want to handle, um, do I, and I just want to send it to you, I still have to go and cr create a profile online and then just like box it all up and send it to you? Or how does that process kind of work? You can do it that way okay. or you can, you can re uh, request a bag. There is actually um, a spot on there. You can request a mail and bag and, and you register and then you give me your address and I will send you a nice little envelope with a polyurethane type bag and then a label on it and she will send it back to me and with postage and all prepared on it. So you just load it up with your clothing and you know, drop it off the post office, and I will get it and go through it and photograph it for you. I got you. Okay, and then you guys um, basically ship to all the states. All states, yes. Okay, are you doing anything outside of kind of America or or not yet? I'm. I'm I have the ability actually um, to do like Northern Europe, um, Australia, Canada. 
um, a New Zealand, I think, right now, because there's not a lot of uh, restrictions on, on the shipping. Okay. Um, if you do a self-posting, but I, I'm afraid that the postage itself might get a little cost prohibitive for some people. Yeah, sure. So, um, I know it I, takes I, a long yeah, time, right? Yeah. Yes, and then so I'm afraid that like sometimes you're going to buy like a really great forty dollars shirt, but I'm going to charge you forty five dollars to ship it to Australia at the same time. So, gotcha. so your forty five dollars shirt is not a ninety five dollars shirt. So yeah, but, gotcha. uh, at some point down the line, if I get a, a bigger pen with UPS or FedEx, perhaps they can give me a better deal um, to do some international shipping because there's there's a missed opportunity with a lot of different countries. But um, even the ones I just mentioned are. You know, they're, you know, they've had some great business to work with those countries when I was with the GG. So. Well, and I'm also assuming that just being able to get something that was, that you wouldn't, like that was made in another country that wouldn't even sell in, you know, your, your continent even, right? Could be cool, right? Yeah, very cool. Like, um, I have a contact um, in the Netherlands and she's got some great things. It's like, Oh, it'd be so cool to say, you know, oh, I, this is a, you know, a Dutch designer and, you know, it's a size 24 and how cool is that? Cause no one else is going to have it. But I mean, and that's definitely a possibility down the road. Sure. Um, you know, but yeah, no, I agree. It's kind of fun to be that girl that doesn't have, you know, I like, the, I like not wearing it when everybody else has either. So I think that's a really fun opportunity to really be a real fashion girl, um, where you are to, you know, be able to have things from other countries. It's always a nice thing for any girl on any side. <laughs> sure. Well, I even know, like, um, just because I, I live in Canada, so even, like, just coming down to L.A., for example, um, and buying clothes, it it won't get to some stores for six or nine months later, right? So, you know, you can be that far ahead of, like, the curve. Not that I'm, like, a big fashion person because I'm not, like, but I and I don't mean it like that. But it's just it's interesting to see even when I've gone down like, with other girls that have bought clothes and then they bring them back. You don't see those same clothes for you know almost a year, right? Which is can be a big deal to some people. Yeah, I mean it's, it, that would be you know I mean Canada would be the, the next natural you know fit to, sure. to really layer in because it's you know it's right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. And the and the, ship, the shipping is not quite as cost prohibitive, obviously. So sure. that's an easier that's an easier ship. Um, but yeah, I would love to market to Canada and then, you know, stand from there. And so, because we did a lot of business um, in dresses and plus sizes in Canada, because there's, there, there's a big mess up there for girls over a size 12. I do know that. Got you. Okay. And so yeah. walk me through if I just come to the site and want to buy something. Is it just like basically buying from any other site online or is it Absolutely. a bit different? Okay. It's very easy. Put it in your cart. Um you know, click, click buy, but no, um, as we're building, I'm offering free shipping. I know I'm probably kind of losing out on some, some money there on that, but that, I think it's really important that people are happy. Um, and I want, so I want to offer free shipping so people will get on the site and order things and, you know, feel like they're not taking a big risk and paying for shipping on something that's used. So, and I also, I had a gal recently who purchased something back to me back in January for me, but had lap band surgery and lost a bunch of weight. And it was a beautiful dress. It was actually a brand new dress. And she's like, may I exchange this and just get site credit? And I'm happy to do that too. Okay. So I, want, I really want people to be happy. I want them sure. to be happy with their purchases. Well, and I'm also assuming that if I buy something for an event or something, I wear it once, I, I could potentially sell it back to you? Or does, do you do that as exactly. well? Exactly, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, that's the whole, that's the goal. Yes, I mean, if you wear a special occasion or something, or if you wear it for me once and decide, you know, like, that was cute for then, I don't want to wear it anymore. Yeah, sell it back. Let's sure. do it again. <laughs> um, and, and then I'm assuming the other thing that probably is a big market for you is like grad dresses? For graduation? Yeah. Is that something? Yes, I would imagine. Yeah, I was hoping that like that we um, we would like get a lot of uh, evening wear, formal dresses, um, you know, bridal, bri bridesmaids. I actually wanted to create a whole portal for that at some point when I get enough stock to make sense of it. Sure. Yeah. Um, that you just do that. Uh, I'd also, uh, it's funny you brought that up, wanted to create, want to create in, in the early part of 2019, a rent the runway uh, version just for plus size girls. Oh, very cool. So I could buy some as extraneous stock from formal war makers or bridal makers. Um, so they could, they could rent a dress. So if it's a, you know, a $700 dress, you know, you rent it for, you know, $29 for the week. Uh, and then, you know, give it, send it back. I think that would be a really great program for, you know, a lot of women over size 12 because I know Red Survey does go up to 18, I think. But that's still like a big barrier for a lot of girls. They, 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 I like, as a big girl myself, I'd like to go to a site and go, this is just for me. Yeah, you know, fair <laughs> Knowing that every, Any dress I click on, I can get. 
<laughs> that's a nice feeling. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. I, I think that's with anybody, right? Like they like things that they can, that make them feel good about themselves, right? In any category. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Like a big and tall guy too. I mean, they would, well, you, know, you want to go to a, a website and go, oh, I'm too tall for all of that. Why, 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 why do I bother? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, it makes it makes total sense. So I, I'm curious though, you've been doing this full time now for for a while and, and walk me through you said you're not technical walk me through a bit of the things that you've kind of learned or wish you knew you know maybe er, a bit earlier on because i i think some of that stuff can be really inspiring to people for the technical aspect well any of um them. i okay well for technical i wish i had hired somebody I wish I'd hired somebody okay. project manage the technical portion of it. Okay. And I would like I would have liked to have still been involved. Um, again, now I've I've learned a lot from that, which is I mean it's not that I didn't want to learn, but I was also working. Sure. Um, now when I'm doing the technical and my and I said I have a good, a good friend of mine in Chicago actually, and okay. she's been walking me through things and doing it just because she's my friend. <laughs> sure. But um, I'm learning a lot. I wish I had um, you know sort of learned more about technology and then hired somebody to manage that process because I think I'd be in a different space now. Interesting. Secondly, sure. and I wish I would have done this, I wish I would have hired, when I did hire someone to do press and social media, that's actually within the plus size fashion space. Oh, and I just hired her a couple months ago, and I think she's fantastic, and I'm getting the best feedback because she knows what she's doing. I didn't hire the right people. I, uh, I, I just wish I'd, I'd learned that portion. Granted, I've heard this from a lot of founders in totally different areas, you know, businesses than, than I'm in when I've gone to the meetings with other founders. But um, I wish I had hired the right people. That's, that's, that's and, and spent that money. I think that's more important even than spending money on improving technology in the beginning. Hiring the right people to manage the project and to get the project out there in front of the right people is really what it's about. So no, I, that... I, I just, yeah. That's really good advice. No, I, I think that's really good yeah. advice, right? Because some people, I think, try to do too much on their own or yeah. <laughs> or try to maybe spend less money where they should maybe spend more money and cut back somewhere else, right? Like, it's hard, right? It's really hard. Oh, yeah. Because I went with, with, the, with the girl that was an expensive for social media, and it's not that she was bad at it. She just didn't know how to reach the right people. I see. So I, I, I wasted a few grand on, on, a, on a person, and again, not this person's fault. She did a good job of what she did, but she didn't know how to reach the right people. I should have vetted better and I should have spent more money Interesting. On, on, the, on the front end. And yeah. So it's like, if you, if you spend a thousand dollars, you should have spent $3,000. You better off putting the $3,000 because guess what? You're going to get what you need. Yeah. Well, cause you're, you're going to end up spending four grand because you have to get somebody For no else. Reason. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So is there any tips on what you found about how you actually vetted these people that seem to be, you know, doing a good job for you now? I, I would say do a lot of, a lot of research okay. um, within the space that you're in, whatever you're doing, if it's healthcare, I mean, it's anything, just really do the research and then start, I, I was starting to write down names of people and seeing these names come up over and over again. And I'm like, okay, that's someone I should talk to. Okay. You know, that's someone I should reach out to. These days, it's so easy to reach people. It's so easy. And if they don't want to talk to you, then fair enough. But I, I, would, start do, I would start doing outreach to people that you keep seeing their names come up or if they're doing something that you really think is fantastic. I, I think that's the way to meet people. And that's how I met the, the person I'm working with now. And then the people, both the people I'm working with now on the tech side and on the, the press and uh, social media side. Interesting. I, I think that's really good advice. So walk me through what's kind of next for you? Like you're obviously trying to grow this thing, but like, like, are you, are you actively just kind of reaching out to people online or how are you trying to get kind of more inventory? Um, so the, the woman I'm working with on, on the social media, yep. she's actually doing a lot of outreach because she has the contact. Uh, um, okay. I had, yeah. So she's, She's really doing a lot of the outreach for me, which is fantastic. And she's getting a lot of people, um, you know, from a press standpoint, number one. And number two, a lot of boutiques. She's really working this week. Uh, this is project for her was to reach out to boutiques for overruns to see oh, if they okay. want to um, go ahead and post some of their products on my site. Because if it's not moving in their store, maybe they'll move on the site because they'll sure. get some more eyes on it. Yeah, because I... So that's, th that's the goal. The goal is on inventory. You're right. <laughs> no, fair. I, but, but that's partly why I wanted to kind of have you on the show, right? Because... You, you've been doing this a while. You, you started kind of doing this 
on the side. Now it's your full time thing. So, you know, talking about kind of your journey of this and it is interesting because I think a lot of people think that you basically launch a company and you're going to start making a ton of money right out of the gate. And that very rarely happens, right? Like it's a bit of a grind. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, patience. Patience, yeah, patience, good. yes. So, so walk me through kind of a bit of a maybe a typical day for you. Like, you you obviously get up in the morning. Do you like what? Walk me through kind of a bit of your day and, and what types of stuff do you do as kind of a, a founder of this? Um, well, after I walk the dog, sure. No, I think that's good. Uh, yeah, well, get out and get move, move. Go so get out and move for a minute. You know, move your mm-hmm. body. It's, so I think it's really important to get sure. some fresh air and uh, to start your perspective on the day. And, get caught up. Um, the, the woman I'm working with is in New York, obviously okay. on the West Coast. Um, I, I, and my, my uh, developer is actually in India. And it's fantastic, okay. actually. He's a great team. Uh, so we're always 12 hours, you know, in, in header in front of each other. Um, so I, have to, I do a lot in the morning, personally, because I'm getting caught up from the day before, um, because the overnight things have happened. Yeah, because they've been uh, and, working, and right? Sort of, All night? Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. I get no, it's... instruction the day before, and the next day I start working, which is why I work on Saturdays, too, and sometimes it's Sunday. Yeah, sure. <laughs> But uh, but I, I, I do a lot uh, of, of catch-up, and then I think of ideas. I have an idea book that I keep, okay. and, and it's, it's, if, if I hit this milestone, I can do this. If I get funding, because it's something else I'm working on is getting funding. Okay. Um, if I get funding, these are the, these are the dreams from the site. Uh, and then I do some customer service work and, and follow up with, with customers and people that have signed up uh, for the newsletter and ask if there's anything they're missing. And I, I think right now what, what's the good part about being small is that you can actually catch people. You can actually yeah. you know, send an email as a founder and say, hey, I'd like to hear from you. you know? yeah, and some of the girls will say some, some fun things to me. So that's really cool. That is I cool. like that part. So yeah. you mentioned you're looking for funding. What exactly are you looking for in, in kind of a deal? Are you looking for some seed money, some venture funding? What, what are you kind of looking for? Uh, seed, seed money. Seed okay. money to get some uh, – I mean, it's, at some point, you really should stop spending your own money. <laughs> at some point, you're really going to say, okay, if it's going to go to the next level, you're going to need someone else to do it for you. And you, you don't want to step into your money too much because – we're getting to the point where, you know, I, I'm still going to do it and I'm going to give it a, a time frame of my own money. Sure. But if I really want to take it to the next level, I'm going to need an investor. Yeah. Unless it completely takes off. And then if it takes off and I feel like that's important and I don't, I don't have an investor, then I'll just hire a couple of people to help me. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I, there's, there's, I have enough to do that. And then, and then maybe you don't need an investor, but I feel like it would be better if you had an investor. I feel like there's, there's just different. There's different ways of uh, working the funding differently if it if it's structured, but with someone else who's actually done this before. So it wouldn't be a lot of money, but it would be enough that I could pay for some really great marketing and start buying into into clothes that I can put on the site. So if I want to buy some overruns or you know some extras from some of the designers or some of the brands. Sure. No, that makes sense, right? Because I think um, you always hear. Well, let, let's be honest. A lot of times, you want an investor for for their contacts too, right? Like, and if you right. get the right investor in, that's done, you know, a bunch of stuff in the space, they can really kind of blow the thing up, not overnight, but like in a very short period of time, right? So I get right, it. That's it what I'm looking at. I, yeah, <laughs> I sent out a deck, and I'm on AngelList um, to a few investors, and. You know, I do a monthly update. They may never respond to me. I don't know, but they may in November go. You know what? We like what you're doing, and we've invested in the A A B C company that's all doing plus size fashion. We think this might work for us. You know, let's, let's, let's invest in you and see where this goes. So that's that's that would be great. No, I I think that's. <laughs> but I, I I'm optimistic. <laughs> sure. No, I I think that's great, right? And have you tried to approach a bunch of kind of. Um, investors in in the valley because you're you're really close. Oh yeah, I, I'm in I'm in it. So uh, yes, I've I've had a couple uh, introductions to some uh, some guys uh, that were one wants to be in the space but is not really. I but I don't have enough traction for him right now. And so we're him and I are going to stay in touch. And um, we we had a, a meeting which was I was excited just to get a meeting because sure. these guys are busy. They don't have time for they don't have time for a phone call. They don't want a face to face. Yeah, so, fair enough. Um, and, and you and you learn just from just from the meetings. You learn from the phone calls. I mean, and again, going back to anybody that's a founder of anything, no matter what space you're in, uh, getting getting a hold of a, a venture capitalist, angel investors, any of them, 
um, seed funding. It's, 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 it's hard. That all by itself can be a full time job. Yeah, no, fair. So, that's fair. That, that's half, that's that's the last half of my day, by the way, is 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 working on funding. So, but the first half is really on the site. The, the second half of my day after lunch usually usually runs into like, let's look at funding, let's do an update, let's see if there's anybody new out there that I'm missing. You know, LinkedIn, a bunch of people. <laughs> I've <Nope>. done that. <laughs> fair enough. I, interesting. Yeah, no, I, I think that's good, right? Because that's kind of what it takes, right? I think a lot of people don't realize how much time and effort you put into all that stuff, right? And I spend a ton of time on LinkedIn too, right? And I have for years, right? And one day it like will pay off or you get like a little win, like one person will write back to you that you've been trying to get a hold of for a while. Like it, it's it's basically, I've gotten pretty much everything I've ever gotten career-wise kind of through LinkedIn as a platform, right? So it's worked really well for me. Yeah, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing platform. I agree. I mean, you know, it was the old old fashioned joke of it's not what you know, it's who you know. Oh, very much so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Or who who you're willing to reach out to, right? And it, it's interesting that you said that like I, I'm I'm glad for you and happy for you that you got a bunch of kind of meetings with some of these really busy kind of investors, right? Because that's that in itself is really hard to do. Well, that was just one. <laughs> but, but, Still, yes, I, I was, I was, and, and that was again, that was an introduction from um, a friend of mine. So, so that was, I, I think, you know, professional friend, but still friends. I mean, sure. we still do friendly things. But um, she made that introduction, and I was grateful for that because it, it took. I mean, that, that's a lot of um, trust on her part as well. So that, yeah, it's, yeah you, you have to like, you have to know a lot of people because that that's where you're going to get like the face to faces or unless you have like some amazing idea that, but I just hope someone sees it in me. But <laughs> no, I, I, I think that's, and then I also know, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. I also know that from talking to, um, I talked, talked to venture capital to other meetings that they were already there, but my meeting, my one-on-one, he said that most um, investors invest in the person and the team and sure. not necessarily always in the idea. Yep, that's fair. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Something I learned. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I 100% believe that too, right? Because like if if you're passionate and you're driven and you you basically are motivated to keep this thing going, you could basically start something, like you could start something new tomorrow and go after it, right? And some investors will keep funding that, right? Which is interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, Amanda, we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about uh, Style For It and uh, any other links you want to mention. Uh, visit styleforit.com. We are also on Facebook and we are Style For It in SS on Instagram. And uh, you can always uh, hit me up with an email, which is info at styleforit.com. Perfect, Amanda. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to be on the show. And I look forward to keeping in touch with you and have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, too. You Thanks. Too. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com. And keep building the future. <laughs>